Good morning everyone and once again a very warm welcome to our service from St Andrew's Church at Ecring. As you can see today we're actually in the church for our service as once again it's very very windy outside so we thought it would be nice to take the service from inside church today with this beautiful window behind us showing the baptism of Jesus. So this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Loving God, we have come to worship you together. So help us pray to you in faith, to sing your praises with joy and to listen to your life-giving word through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Spirit of God fills the world and he knows our every word and deed. So let us now open our hearts to God and confess our sins together in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed that we've not loved you with our whole heart, that we've not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, we ask that you forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we will be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. So I pray, may the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reading that I've chosen for today's service is taken from John's Gospel, and it's chapter 14, Jesus, the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I wouldn't tell you this if it weren't so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and I will take you to myself so that you will be where I am. And you know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas, one of his disciples, said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. Now I'm going to show you a picture and come up on the screen now. And this is the longest bridge in the UK. Do you recognise it? This is the Humber Bridge. And it's a single span suspension bridge, just under a mile long. And when it was completed in 1981, it was the longest in the world of its kind as a suspension bridge. It's now been overtaken. It's been relegated into ninth place in the world. Very impressive bridge, but it pales into insignificance when we look at the next bridge and the picture of that is coming up. This bridge is called the Dan Yang Kunsan Grand Bridge and it's in China. It connects the towns or cities of Shanghai and Nanjing. And this bridge is 102 miles long. 102 miles long. Well, that's really interesting. But what on earth has this got to do with our service today, bridges? 
because today I'd like us to think about another bridge. A bridge that's not just a mile long, or a bridge that's a mere 102 miles long. No, because this bridge spans time and space. A bridge that spans earth and heaven. A bridge that connects mankind to God. And this bridge is Jesus. The ultimate bridge. But you may think, why do we need a bridge? Why do we need a bridge to God? So I think we need to go right back to the beginning, almost the beginning of the Bible. And if we go back to the Garden of Eden, garden that shows how God intended the relationship to be with mankind, how he intended the relationship to be with the world, his creation. The Garden of Eden was beautiful. It was idyllic, a place of peace, plenty and tranquility, of harmony, where God actually walked alongside his creation in this beautiful place. But as is often the case, when you've got everything, it's never quite enough. And Adam and Eve wanted just that little bit more. And we know from the story that that led to a separation of Adam and Eve from God. And from that point onwards, the gulf between mankind and God grew wider and wider. There are stories throughout the Old Testament of how God tried to make that relationship right again. He tried to restore the relationship over and over again. But each time he was rejected, he was let down, disappointed, heartbroken at man's response to his efforts to bring that relationship back again. And we, of course we know that that led to the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate declaration of love. Because God sent Jesus, his only son, a very part of himself, to show just how much we were loved, to show just how much he wanted to restore our relationship. The ultimate sacrifice, but of course it was still rejected by most people. God wasn't defeated, not even by death. Jesus wasn't defeated by death. Because on Jesus' resurrection, we know that a bridge was built. Jesus became a bridge for those who believed in him. And I think this following picture illustrates it absolutely wonderfully. As you can see, there's a chasm in this picture one side is God and one side is man. It used to be difficult, if impossible, to cross. But Jesus built a bridge to God. There's a wonderful analogy that I found online and it says that Jesus built a bridge with two old bits of wood, three rusty nails, and a heart filled with love. Jesus built a bridge with himself on the cross. And all we need to do is to believe that that bridge is there, to believe in the bridge, take Jesus' hand and walk across it back into that wonderful relationship with God that he always intended for us, back into his light and back into his love. Let's cross that bridge. Now we're going to have our song for this week. And this is quite an interesting song. It's called Our Father. It's the Lord's Prayer in a Caribbean form. Now, when we chose this hymn, and when Robert did all the music for it and we looked at the words, it was wonderful. When it actually came to fitting the words to the music, it was a real challenge. And you'll see that for yourselves. But we gallantly 
had an attempt at it and I hope you're going to have an attempt at it too. Because actually it's quite a nice song. So we're now going to sing Our Father in Heaven. I really hope you enjoyed singing along with us there to our Father. But now it's time for prayer. So if you'd like to close your eyes and just listen to these words as we pray to God. Father, we give you thanks that Jesus' open arms on the cross made it possible for all of us, believing in him, to draw closer to you enabling us to take his hand in faith and trust and to leave all our mistakes, all our pain, guilt and sin at his feet and free of them all, walk onwards to you on the other side of the bridge, cleansed and renewed, revitalised and whole. Father, we can never know the extent of your feelings but we know that if we loved as you do and we were rebuffed and let down over and over and again, that we would feel hurt, disillusioned and wanting to walk away from the pain. But we also know that you are God and not a man. That you love so deeply that you cannot give up on us. That in sending Jesus you were willing to give us the opportunity once again, to return to you through him. And we thank you for all that you did in order to do this and for all that Jesus went through. Father, you gave us a bridge of love and forgiveness, a bridge which is open to all who wish to cross it. All those who love and believe in Jesus, the one who made it all possible. But, Lord God, we do not want to keep this bridge to ourselves. We want so many others to have the opportunity too. So help us all, we pray, to draw people towards the bridge, the bridge that is Jesus himself, trusting that he is the way and the truth and the life and the way that leads to you. 
as our churches begin to open again in this time of challenge. We pray that they are beacons of light in times of darkness. That those who are drawn to that light will find hope and care and compassion, love, peace and forgiveness. May your churches and all their people radiate your love to everyone around them, welcoming them and sharing with them, showing the way to you in gentleness and understanding. And Father, in your name that we pray. Amen. And now we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we remember as always that the Lord God Almighty is our Father. And he loves us and he cares tenderly for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Saviour. He's our bridge. He has redeemed us and he will defend us to the end. The Lord the Holy Spirit is among us and he will lead us in God's holy way. To God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed our service today and hopefully we'll meet again next week for a service from St Andrew's Church. Also a reminder that we are holding services in church at the moment. And later today, 10.30 today, there will be a service of Holy Communion at St Andrew's Church. So you're welcome to join us for that service if you would like to. But now I pray, may the Lord bless us all and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly upon us all and give us his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all forevermore. Amen. So shall we now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Until next week. Bye-bye.